Hey everyone, and welcome to Automotive the Collector Car Series. I'm Mike. And I'm Sean. And today, we're going to talk Evos. You might be asking, why is this car a collectible? There's actually three reasons why an Evo can be collectible. With limited production, this car is rare. It's highly desirable. To find one of these cars, you're paying a pretty price and it's gonna be on the market for a very short amount of time as they are highly, highly desirable. The last thing is maintaining value. The value of these cars, in some instances, are actually going for more money than you could have bought this car for brand new. That makes this car a collectible. So here, come check this out. One of the reasons I like this car so much is it's kind of a greatest hits album for Evos. We have some 2010 MR wheels on it. We have some 2010 Recaros. And it's also a five-speed. Okay. What more could you ask for? Which you never see. Like, I never saw these under 40,000. Like, it, it was ridiculous when these came out. Uh, you know, kind of same, you know, the STIs, dealer market, just crazy. Um, but they're super desirable. They don't, or they ever, they don't stay on the market long enough to actually, you know, debate between two. Yep. So, this car is stock block, stock manifold, stock turbo fairly stock with some tasteful mods so um, we do have the three inch catalyst downpipe he has an upper and lower intake charge piping our aftermarket um, he has the um, blow off valve which sounds really nice on this car um, as you noticed on the outside it has the bbs that doesn't come off of this car, yeah. those rims, the Recaro seats, those are from a 2010. Yeah. And last but not least, he has some Neo Motorsport coilovers on this, which does make it look really nice. It's not slammed to the ground, and so you can drive it normally like you would always, but it still has that nice little aggressive look. And actually, today while we were pulling in, we had someone ask, Where do we get the rims from? <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. It's not our car. I just yelled online. Like, where else are you going to buy rims? Like, I mean, I didn't make them in my garage, right? So the performance of this car, stock, 295 horsepower yep. and 300 pounds feet of torque. Yeah, and I mean, zero to 60, you know, just over five seconds. Uh, the MR was actually just under five seconds and top speed around 155 miles an hour. That's pretty quick. For, for a four-door, all-wheel drive sedan car, I think it's it's all that you need off the lawn. Takes the Lancer to the next level. Yeah, as we saw, we had a guy today in a Lancer 
uh, pull up beside us, and he was like, nice light, uh, nice Evo. Yeah. Thanks, not mine though, but I'll take the credit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what do you think of the fit and finish of the interior? Overall, um, it's subtle and really nice. It's, it's, it's modern, it's, you know, it looks like it has some carbon fiber pieces and some nice trim. Um, but when I look at this radio, I just think it's incomplete. This car is not complete to me because of this, you know, very simple, yes, very base model, yes, because that's what it is, but ugly. I don't like it, I just, I really don't like it. Other than that, you know, the dash, is, it, it's subtle, very concentrated on what you need to know. It's got some information in the middle, and it's got its RPMs, and you've got your speed, and that's all you really need to know. Um, you've got traction control on this side, you got to always make sure that's off. Keep it in tarmac so you can have a little fun. The steering wheel is really nice, actually, I was told that um, this model doesn't have volume button, where the newer models actually do. So it just has the all-wheel control, so you can control it, but it's nice, it's a, it's a proper steering wheel. Uh, I think it's better than the 2020 Super because it actually has a little bit of design in the middle of this bottom part where the Supra was just a plastic square. Yeah, I, I mean, I find this interior, like, you're in a Lancer. I mean, you're not buying an Evo for the fit and finish. Yeah. It is what it is in terms of the, uh, you know, the hard plastics and, uh, you know, the faux carbon fiber, which doesn't look bad, but it, it really, you know, it, it kind of reeks of cheapness. It's yeah. that uh, kind of Mitsubishi-esque. You either you love it or you hate it or you just take it. Right, really, at the end of the day. Um, to compare like, this to an inside of a Subaru, uh, 2009, 2010, I think the Subaru has a better interior design. Yeah, I'd probably say so. Yeah, I, have to, I have to say that. What do you think about the drive in terms of uh, you know, handling and uh, you know, throttle response, all that feel? Like, uh, you know, you've had a talent. What do you think? How would you compare them? A night and day. I mean, this is this. Is of a drive than a 2G Talon. Um, the gearbox in this, pretty short. Like, you know, we're going to a little second gear here, like, that's three grand. Six. Like, 100K. It, yeah. It's quick, short gears, but it feels tight. Like, yeah. we're, we're in corners here, like, I'm not really worried. Roll or anything like that, but versus a, a little older 2G, this will take it all all day long, 100%. Yeah. Um, just sheer power difference too. Unless you start modifying the 2Gs, and we all know 4G63s are absolute power yeah. houses, but you got to build it to be there. So you know, stock versus stock in the corner here, like I I, I feel good. Clutch is really high. <laughs> um, so it's far out. 
Yeah, it's very far right. out. Uh, now that could be the, what you said, it's uh, an exiting mushroom. Oh, yeah. But yes, OE. OE exiting. Okay, yeah. I see. All right. Yeah, and uh, which is fine, I guess, in terms of, you know, once you get used to it and whatnot. Um, you know, all the manuals that I've driven have, have the, kind of that natural uh, factory clutch engagement. Uh, yeah, pedal placement's a little high, but, uh, uh, I mean, it, it handles great. It's, uh, and, you know, you can really feel the boost come on, you know, when you're in that, uh, basically, target power zone. But this uh, has a really long, and it holds for a long time. Yeah. It doesn't just, it's not three grand, four grand on a big turbo. It's, you know, literally 2,000 RPM, so you're able to get some decent power out of it right yeah. away, right? Absolutely. I like that. This is small turbo gang right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's very quick. Turbo lag is not as, you know, needed or not as prevalent as it would be in a big turbo car, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know what it reminds me of, to be honest with you? It reminds me of my talent. That's really what it reminds me of. Uh, oh, yeah? You know, with more power, obviously, but uh, right. yeah, it just holds the road um, like a proper uh, wheel drive car should. You uh, can get in a little bit early compared to you know, rear wheel drive and front wheel drive because they're going to do their own thing, right? For this one, you point, it shoots. That's what I like to go For sure, absolutely. The instrument layouts and everything is in the right place. And I do have the hand to Mitsubishi. I mean, it, it is a nice quality dash or the nicest quality plastics, but everything is uh, basically within arm's reach. Uh, it's not distracting, it's not in your way, but uh, you know, it, it uh, still gives you the information that you need yep. uh, at any given point in time. So, um, you know, I have to hand it, uh, I, I think it's well designed, probably just, uh, you know, we, we try to save a little bit of money. Yep. and so ready for performance and it's ready for modifications. It's not your typical super where you try and get over 300 wheel horse, you're in trouble. This you can put 300 wheel horse and you're not going to lose sleep at night or you're ruining your ring lands. You're going to blow it up. Is something going to go on? And so for a platform that is superior for performance, yet very comfortable to drive, I mean, this has coil over on this is a step. I would take this as probably one of the perfect all-wheel drive daily vehicles that you can get. Yeah, and I mean, that I, I can understand where you're coming from. I think I'm just a little spoiled with how comfortable the Volvo is. And, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, you guys will, uh, if you haven't watched that episode, watch that episode where we review my uh, uh, 2007 S60R uh, just to get the, you know, they're all-wheel drive, they're turbocharged. Um, 
very similar to this. Very similar in uh, in terms of uh, you know transverse engine layout, all that stuff. But they're two completely different animals. I mean, this is way more track focused, whereas uh, the, the Volvo is you know it's basically well, it's a sleeper. It's a sleeper. It's it, the R stands for refined and it stands for race. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, Mitsubishi. This is a good swan song. Uh, you know, see them coming out with anything like this ever again, really, can you? Can you? I'm not sure. That's true. Um, I don't know. Here's a test for him. What does GSR stand for? Oh, I don't know. Mitsubishi Lancer Evo GSR. Good stuff. Good tell you. Grand Sport Rally. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. So, they got their normal Lancers, they got their Rally. The rally Arts. Rally Arts. And then you've got your GSRs. GSR stands for Grand Sport Rally. Hmm. Which this is the base model of it. And you know what? Who cares? We're in an Evo and we're having fun. And I think that's literally what Evos are about. Perhaps the experience. It's like Lamborghini. Lamborghinis are fun and kind of fast. But anytime you drive a Lamborghini, it's an experience. And I feel wholeheartedly that's why I like this car so much is it's been a non-stop experience driving this car all day. You know, you don't have to always put your foot in it to be having fun. It's just, it's a simple yet refined, extremely comfortable drive. A little stiff suspension, but yeah. I, I just, well done. I, I think good job on Evo and I'm really sad that they're gone, but you know, with, with endings of something great, usually becomes new beginnings of something even greater. So. I'm looking forward, Mr. Bishi, and do not pull a Toyota on us, okay? Don't pull a Toyota on us. We know that you've already ruined the Eclipse Mini by bringing out the crossover, and I'm mad at you, Mr. Bishi. I'm mad at you. You know what would actually be a good comparison? Is taking this 08 and comparing it to uh, the last Evo 10, yeah. final so, edition. Final edition. Alright guys, we got to say thank you to our man PSI for TSI, he's given us the 08 EVO, um, but that's not it. As you can see behind us, there's two vehicles we're also going to have on the channel. So make sure you like the video, you like the video, and subscribe to the channel to see these other cars that we're going to review. And also check out our Patreon. That's right. Support the channel, it means a lot to us. So I'm Mike, you can find me on Instagram, and at Sean. the insurance dude. <laughs> and we got Sean here. Okay, find him at Levy Photography and the Northern Driver. Guys, that's the end of our episode. Hope you have a great day.